Shanti, good morning, happy Sadhguruvar, Indu Ben, welcome to Los Angeles. Thank you, Gita Ben. Indu Ben is right now in a Leicester, and we all are hearing, we all will go to Leicester and we hear Babas Murli there. And Indu Ben, from the childhood, she's in Babas knowledge. And um, she took lots of sustenance from Dadi Janki. And Dadi Janki uh, and Jenti Ben and Sudesh Didi had lots of love and respect and um, with, from, like with um, Indu Ben. And so let's, we can hear and she will share her experience also. Welcome Indu Ben. Shanti, everybody. <clears throat> today's Murli, the first line of today's Murli has been okay. spinning around in my head since morning because in the UK now it's afternoon. Everyone can hear. Okay. Can everybody hear? Can everybody okay. hear? No. Yes. Can yeah. you hear now? Yes. Thank you. So I was just saying that the first line of today's Murli is something, it's like I feel like I've heard it the first time and I've been thinking about it since morning. And today's Murli is the third year. I'm going to read you the first line. So you know what I'm talking about. Essence, sweet children, the Father Srimad makes you constantly happy. I've never heard Srimad put into that context. But Srimad makes us happy. And if you think about it, the Sunday that's just gone, we had the Avyak Murli. And in the Avyak Murli, Baba was saying that Srimad works like a fortress. And what does the fortress do? It protects, the, it protects you so the enemy cannot come in. Negativity cannot come in. That is the work of Srimad. And at the same time, that same fortress will, it's your line, it's your barrier. If you go beyond this, then you know what's outside. Maya is waiting to come in, but if you go outside, then you greet Maya. And so I've always known Srimad to be protection. But today Baba is saying Srimad makes you happy. And for majority of Brahmin, Srimad is something that has become our natural nature. Srimad has become a habit. Srimad has become a lifestyle. We cannot even think that, oh, no, I won't do this, or I won't get up for Amrit Villa today, or I won't get up for Murli today. It's Srimad. It's, it's routine. It's lifestyle. It's normal. We don't know anything else. And so <clears throat> this is a stage that has to be very natural, following Srimad. So the Father Srimad makes you constantly happy. 
therefore renounce the directions of bodily beings and only follow the directions of the one father and in today's murli you'll see baba is giving a whole list throughout the murli of the different types of bodily beings that we listen to like even though we're baba's children we listen to um some life coach you know nowadays it's very fashionable to have a life coach or a personal trainer or a you know your doctor or whoever it is or your guru we listen to these kind of people who we think know a lot they know and do you know what people say they say oh but they say the same thing as the brahma kumaris they say exactly what brahma kumaris say and so we haven't actually realized that what one baba is saying like a couple of days ago baba said that it's only one shiv baba who teaches us to be so conscious no guru no life coach no doctor ever ever tells us to be so conscious and so baba's giving a list of the different types of bodily beings that we listen to that we have been listening to for the past 63 births indu ben aapka mic thoda aage rakhe kyunki thoda distant bhai sunai deta hai can you hear now yeah yeah okay question of the murli today which children's intellects have not yet stopped wandering they become baba's children but the intellect is wandering out there so which children's intellects have not yet stopped wandering answer the intellect of those who don't have faith in the directions of the highest on high father that is in god's direction they don't have faith in god's direction so their intellects have not stopped wandering because of not having full faith in the father what do they do very interesting image because of not having full faith in the father they keep a foot in each side <clears throat> so there's a foot in baba's world and a foot in the old world there's a foot in devotion there's a foot in yam mm -hmm. <clears throat> as well as following the father's directions they also continue to perform devotion and bathe in the ganges etc what will become the state of the children one foot here one foot there what will become the state of such children so imagine if you're in a boat and you were one foot in two boats and the boat is sinking the boat is drowning and you say save me eh? what it's worse than actually being in just one boat it's you're it's like you feel like you're torn apart so what will become the state of ch such children it is because they don't follow shrimad completely that they continue to stumble one is the wandering of the intellect the other is stumbling from pillar to post the murli of the song of today's murli take us away from this land of sin to a world of rest and comfort is it is everything okay can everybody hear everything's okay yes you all can hear proper yeah. thank you <clears throat> only one one person is saying what about the others yes ben yes 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 yes, yes. 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 yes.
Yes, yes. The voice, little bit voice is stumbling. The breaking. Breaking, the voice is breaking. I think you have to keep little bit more nearby. There is a sound behind coming. Oh. Okay, we'll do something. Now? Something in your back here, a background like the sound is coming. It's an echo. Echo. Oh. Now? Yes, much better. Now? Yeah. That's right, I think. Better, you. better. Better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So the song, Take Us Away from This Land of Sin to a World of Rest and Comfort. Om Shanti. You children heard this song. Who is singing this song? You heard this song? of the devotees. This is what devotees say to God, to take us away from this world. You no longer sing this. You know that you have found the highest on high father. That's why we can't sing this song. Because we have found the highest on high father. He alone is the highest on high. Something, something to churn about, to think about is <clears throat> in which aspect is Baba the highest on high? Why is he called the highest on high? So firstly, his name. His name is the highest on high because his name means benefactor. Secondly, his Residence is the highest on high. There's nothing higher than Paramdham. And thirdly, his task, his occupation is the highest on high. Nobody else has this particular occupation or task of purifying. He alone is the highest on high. All human beings are at present in their most degraded state. Sorry, in their most degraded stage. The highest and high human beings were, so one is Shri Baba is the highest and high, then when it comes to human beings, the highest and high human beings were those deities in Bharat. Their praise is so what are their qualifications? What is their, um, you know, like uh, when you have a letter or you have to send somebody some information about yourself, then what do you write? You put your name and then all the qualifications next to it, like a, a lawyer. When a letter goes from his office, it's written LLB, this, 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 or a doctor, it's written MD or whatever it is. So the qualifications are written next to the name. So here, the qualifications of the deities <clears throat> is being full of all virtue, etc. There's a list of five qualifications. People don't know who made those deities so elevated. They have now become totally impure. Those deities have become impure. But still, the Father is the highest on high. Sages and holy men, etc., pray to Him. Human beings have been wandering after sages for half a cycle. So the sages pray to the pray to God and people pray to the sages. So they've been wandering around after sages for half a cycle. You now know that the Father has now come. We now go back. We now go back to the Father. By giving us his Srimad, he makes us the most elevated and 
constantly happy. Shri means elevated. Shri means the word for elevated in Hindi is Shresht. So he makes us the most elevated with Srimad and constantly happy. It was by following the directions of Ravan that you became those with the most degraded intellect. You must now no longer follow anyone else's directions. You have called out to me, the purifier, Father. So why do you chase after those? So one is we were following the directions of sages. And now Baba saying, why do you chase after those who drown you, who push you down, those who drown you? Why do you, why do you renounce the directions of the one and continue to stumble along after many others? Many children listen to this knowledge and then also go and bathe in the Ganges or they go to Gurus. There's one sister here. She comes to the center and then she also goes to the temple. Temple is nearby. So she also goes to the temple. So one day we said to her that how come you come to the center and go to the temple. She said, I've been going to that temple for years. Before even the center was open, I've been going to that temple. So now I can't change this habit. I can't stop going. I understand what Baba is saying, but my day passes. My whole, I have friends there. I have a routine there. I have a, like, I have little jobs there. So I will always go to the temple, we said, fine. You know? Baba tells us that don't force them, don't stop them. So many children listen to this knowledge and then also go and bathe in the Ganges or go to gurus, etc. The father says that Ganges is not the purifier. In spite of that, if you follow human dictates and go and bathe there, then the father would say, you do not have faith in the direction of the highest on high father. On one side, there are God's directions and on the other side, there are devilish directions. What would become of such people? Following God. If you keep a foot in each boat, you would be torn apart. They do not have full faith in the Father. They say, Baba, I belong to you and will become elevated by following your Srimad. Every step we take has to be according to the directions of the highest on high Father. When Baba uses this word, every step we take, he's not referring to physical steps. He's referring to our seconds, our decisions, our thoughts. Every thought you take, every second that passes. So even though he says the word step, it's referring to our thoughts. Every step we take has to be according to the directions of the highest or high father. Only the father will make you into the masters of the land of silence and the land of happiness. Therefore, the father says, the one whose body I have entered from Baba, the one whose body I have entered had 12 gurus, but he still became Dhammopradhan. There wasn't any benefit 
in following them. So one is physical gurus, when we go to a guru. But the other is, sometimes we read books which are what in the world is called self-help books, how to get out of depression, how to be successful in life. Even those are, it's like going to a guru. You're reading something which is prepared by a human being, which has been written by a human being. And even that is the same as what Baba is saying, stumbling or wandering. The intellect is reading something else. Intellect is taking in something apart from Baba's gyan. So the one whose body I have entered had 12 gurus, but he still became the Pradhan. There wasn't any benefit in following them. When he found the father, he renounced them all. He renounced all 12 gurus, plus he renounced like that. No, it didn't take him long. When he found the highest and high father, the father said, hear no evil, see no evil. Human beings are now totally impure and they have Samopradhan intellect. There are also many here who are unable to follow Sri. Many sitting in front of Baba, many who go to Madhuban every year, but they're unable to follow Srimad. Baba gives the reason why they don't have enough strength. So where am I going to get strength from? I'm going to get strength when I connect with Baba, when I have that yoga. And so it's like almost as if it's a vicious circle. I can't connect, I can't get strength. I can't get strength, I can't follow Srimad. So the connection, that's why Baba is emphasizing every single worldly remembrance, remembrance, remembrance. Because that's where I will get the strength from to follow Srimad, to face problems, and to change, to transform myself. Maya continues to make them stumble. Ravan is the enemy. It's interesting to do a workshop on what is Maya and what is Ravan. What's the difference between the two? Because look, Baba said, Maya continues to make them stumble. Ravan is the enemy. So are Maya and Ravan two different things? Are they two different people? Two different identities? Because sometimes Baba uses the word Maya, that's female. My, Baba always refers to Maya as female. And Ravan is male with 10 heads. So this is an interesting workshop to do. So Ravan is the enemy, whereas Rama is your friend. I've always connect Ravan and Rama because they're from the same story, the Ramayana. Some call God, they call him Rama and some call him Shiva. His real name is Shiv Baba. I do not take Reba. According to the drama, my name is Shiva. People have become confused because 10 different names have been given to the one. And there was a book once and it had 108, 108 names for Shiva. So it confuses people. They give whatever name enters their minds. My real name is Shiva. I enter this body I do not enter Krishna, etc. People think that Vishnu resides in the subtle region. In fact, he is the dual form that represents the family path. However, 
there isn't anyone with four arms. Four arms symbolize family life, family path. They symbolize, Vishnu is symbolic. Four arms symbolize family life, whereas if it was just two arms, it would symbolize the path of isolation. The father establishes the religion of he says the religion of Brahmins, he says the religion of deities. But today Baba saying that the father establishes the religion of the family path. The family has always been there from the, from the beginning of Golden Age. The concept of family. Sannyasis belong to the path of isolation. Those who belong to the family path they become impure from pure. Therefore, in order to support the world, it is the parts of sannyasis to become pure. In this aspect, Baba always praises the sannyasis. That this is their role. This is something that's necessary. That if it wasn't for them, the downfall, the degradation would have been faster. So what these sannyasis, those who are on the path of isolation, it's just they don't hang around in groups or anything. They're just by themselves. So what they do is they halt, they stagger the downfall because of their purity. Therefore, in order to support the world, it is the part of the sannyasis to become pure. There are hundreds of thousands and millions of them. When a mela takes place, many go there. They'll go to the kumbh mela, they'll go wherever there's a big function taking place. Then Baba says something else about them. They do not prepare their own food. <clears throat> Why do they not prepare their own food? Because they don't earn a living. Means they don't go to work and earn a living. And with that money, they can buy food and prepare it. No. They don't earn money in that way. They do not prepare their own food. They live on the sustenance they receive from householders. So they don't actually have to beg. They will not beg. But what happens is they'll go in front of householders. They'll go in front of a house. And it is understood that you have to give them something. It goes without saying. If a beggar comes, beggar has to beg, please give me something. And you can shout at the beggar and say, go away. You keep coming to my house every day. But when the sannyasis come, people are very, very respectful. I remember a scene and it's like Baba and Drama showed me this scene. When I was 12, um, I had gone to visit India. My mother had gone to Madhuban and she'd left me with her locket, her family. So we were having lunch or breakfast, I can't remember which one it was. And at that time, a beggar came to the door and he's begging that give me something. And my mother's sister, my auntie, she started shouting at him because we were having lunch, I think it was. Oh, where you always come at the wrong time, uh, come later, etc., etc. She was actually very rude to him. And because we were from the West, we'd come from the UK, we were like, we didn't like her mannerisms towards this beggar. And we'd never even actually seen beggars. So she got up and she just went and found some stale food, I mean, yesterday's food, and she gave it to him. At least she gave him something. That's all I thought at that moment. But, you know, she gave him something, beggar. 
less than half an hour after a sannyasi came, saffron robes, you know, and he did not say a word. He just stood there. She saw him, because in India the, at that time, the, the doors are open of the houses. There was no concept of locking the doors or anything. So she saw him. Immediately she got up, immediately she covered her head, immediately she took fresh food for him, immediately she bowed at his feet and she gave him food and, you know, she was very, very respectful. And we watched this scene. And me and my brother were looking at each other, but, you know, they're hypocrites, means my auntie. But to one, she was nasty and to one, she was respectful. So we asked her afterwards, why did you do like that? And she didn't like our questioning. Obviously, we're 12, 11, uh, and we're questioning her behavior. We're criticizing her that she shouldn't have done like that. And at that time, we didn't even have gyan. But that scene stuck with me. That how, because of purity, because these sannyasis, they lead a pure life, they are respected. And so Baba's talking about these sannyasis. They do not prepare their own food. They live on the sustenance they receive from the householders. They have renounced performing action. So where would they get their food from? So they eat whatever householders give them. Householders believe that those are their donation. Giving to a sannyasi is like considered a very charitable act. This one too was an impure worshipper. If you look at the murlis of this, this week, Baba keeps referring to Brahma Baba and telling us about Brahma Baba's story. This one too was an impure worshipper. He's now becoming pure by following Srimad. He is making effort to claim his inheritance from the father. So Brahma Baba and Shiva have a very interesting relationship. Sometimes Shiva Baba will talk about Brahma Baba and sometimes Brahma Baba will talk about Shiva Baba. Sometimes it's, um, they're talking like, I, I do this, like um, Shiva Baba said in today's movie, my name is Shiva. He's talking about himself. And sometimes Brahma Baba will talk about himself. So he's making effort to claim the inheritance from the father. This is why you are told to follow the father. Maya makes you fall in every respect. Emotionally, physically, financially, in relationships. Maya makes you fall in every respect. It is because of body consciousness that people make mistakes, whether they are poor or wealthy. Wealthy people make mistakes and the poor also. You should at least make effort to break body consciousness. For the body consciousness to break is great effort. So what is the effort? The father says, consider yourselves to be souls and Play your part through your bodies. Why do you become body conscious? He's asking us the question. Why do you become body conscious? And if he's asking the question, that means he knows the answer. So the answer, according to the drama, you had to become body conscious. At this time, you have become completely body conscious. The father says, you are soul. It is the soul that does everything. When a soul leaves his body, if that body were then cut 
would there be any sound? It's like soul has left the body and what happens afterwards? Post-mortem. So in a post-mortem, they cut the body. But the, the body doesn't react. But when the soul is in the body, and even a tiny injection, there'll be a reaction. There'll be, ouch, or your body will go like that. It will clench. But when there's no soul, then if that body were then cut, would there be any sound? Would there be, ouch? No. It is the soul that says, do not hurt my body. Souls are imperishable, whereas bodies are perishable. Consider yourselves to be souls and remember me, the Father. Renounce body consciousness. To the extent that you children become soul conscious, then, to the extent that you children become so conscious, accordingly, you will continue to become healthy and free from disease. What's the difference between healthy and free from disease? So what Baba is saying here is continue to become means you'll continue for the next more than 20 wonder. Even in copper age, physical health is there and the soul is also healthy, both. The body is free from disease and the soul is strong, healthy. It's still got capacity, it's still got strength. So you'll continue to become healthy and free from disease. With this power of yoga, you become free from disease for 21 births. The more soul conscious you become, so one is the impact on our spiritual and physical health, yeah, on the soul and the body. Then the other thing is, the more you become soul conscious, the higher the status you will claim. You will also, that's Second thing, status. Third is, you will also be liberated from punishment. Health, status, free from punishment. Otherwise, there will have to be a great deal of punishment. Therefore, you have to become very soul conscious. Many do not have the fortune of receiving this knowledge. See, sometimes there's a center, and even the neighbors don't know what's going on in the center. So they don't have the fortune of receiving this knowledge. How could someone become a deity unless he came into your clan? First, he has to come into the Brahmin clan before he can come into the deity clan. Unless he came into your clan, unless he became a Brahmin. That is, definition of Brahmin, that is a mouth-born child of Brahma. So when we see the Dadis, Mary Janki once said, that all the Dadis are mouth-born. Means Brahma spoke, Sri Baba entered Brahma and spoke through Brahma and they took spiritual birth. But we are not mouthful. We are thought born. Brahma Baba had the thought that so many would come. There will be foreigners coming also. So we are born from Brahma's thoughts. Unless he became a Brahmin, that is, a mouth born child of Brahma. Many come here. And they then write, saying, they come to the centers, they come to Madhuban, and they write, Baba, Baba, just for the sake of saying it. They're doing the actions, but just for, the, for namesake. They just write one or two letters and then disappear. Many 
they want permission to go to Baba. So they will write to Baba, they will follow Srimad, they'll be pure for a year or six months, they'll visit Madhavan, that's it. That's it. They've done, done what's necessary to visit Abu, to visit Madhavan. Then they go back to their old lifestyle and then disappear. So now what's going to happen with them? What's the karma philosophy of that? They've written Baba, they've gone to Madhavan, and then they disappear. They too will go to heaven, but amongst the subjects. Many subjects are created. Out of the 900,000 in the beginning, how many of those are subjects? More than 800,000 will be subjects. So, they too will go to heaven, but amongst the subjects, many subjects are created. Later on, when there is a lot of sorrow, many will come running. Now the thing is, in lockdown, they can't come running to the center. So many will start to listen online. Many centers will open and the sound will spread that God has come. You children still lack becoming soul conscious. There is still a great deal of body consciousness. If at the end there is any body consciousness in you, your status too will be reduced. You will then become. So for one group of people, Baba said, okay, they've come to Baba, they've written Baba, Baba, they will become subjects. But now, those who remain body conscious after belonging to Baba, you will become maids and servants. There are many maids and servants, number one. The kings are given maids in the dowry. The wealthy subjects are not given them. Some children have seen in visions how many maids and servants Radha bought with her in her dowry. As you progress, you will have many visions. It is better to be a wealthy subject than an ordinary maid. The word maid is bad. In Hindi it's considered bad and so even though in Madhavan you will see servants but they're not called maid. They're not called, the Hindi word for maid is dasi. Uh, so they're called knockers or servants or uh, daddy would say my, you know like servant but not the word maid. The word maid is bad. It is still better to become a wealthy subject. When you belong to the father, what happens? As soon as you belong to Baba, Maya offers you greater hospitality. She takes such good care of you. She will take care of your needs. She will make you justify your unrighteous actions. So Baba says, Maya offers you greater hospitality. She becomes more powerful and fights with those who are powerful. I remember once, must be 30 years ago, and Daddy had come to visit a center, and then Daddy was giving class, and one mother in the class, she said to Daddy, it's okay for you, Maya doesn't come to you. You never get like how we have Maya. You don't have Maya. You don't get that. And Daddy said, who says Maya doesn't come to me? She comes to me first and then I send her to you. <laughs> and so people think that Maya never came to Daddy. So she becomes more powerful and fights with those who are powerful. Then because of body consciousness, 
you turn your faces away from Shri Baba, you stop remembering Baba. You have time to eat, and yet you don't have time to remember the Father who makes you into the master of the world. Many good children, what do the good children do? Many good children forget Shiv Baba, and the moment you forgot Shiv Baba, and become body conscious. Should you not even remember the Father and write a letter to the one who has given you the donation of life? Means what was our life like before Baba? Many were depressed, many were empty, many were searching, many were struggling. So Baba has given us the donation of life. So Baba saying, should you not even remember the father and write a letter to the one who has given you the donation of life? However, don't even ask. Is Baba saying you at least have gratitude for Baba? But don't even ask. Maya catches hold of you by the nose and leads you away. So two images are there in today's worldly. One is having a foot in two different boats, so you get torn apart, and the other is Maya holding you by the nose and leading you away. By following Srimad at every step, you receive an income of multi millions at every step. You become wealthy to such an extent that your wealth is uncountable. You receive wealth, prosperity, land, everything. Copper, iron, bronze, etc. do not exist there. There won't be copper coins, there won't be iron or anything like that. In there the are room, only gold let's coins. We can do traffic control. Oh, now here is 7 o'clock. No problem.
subjects in the golden age as are the rulers so are the subjects so the rulers are happy they have uncountable wealth they have everything so baba is giving the difference of the rulers of both ages as are the rulers so are the subjects all are elevated however this does not sit in the intellect of human beings. They are samopradhan. That's why it doesn't sit. The father explains, you used to be like that. This one, Brahma, was also like that. I have now come to make you into deities. Even then, you do not become that. You continue to fight amongst yourselves. So how do we fight amongst ourselves? This is what Baba is saying. I am very good. I am this. I am that. All of this is body consciousness. Even to say I am very good is body consciousness. I am this. I am that. None of them understand that they are in hell. We are in the extreme depth of hell. You children now know this. Number one, according to the effort you make. Human beings are now in extreme hell. The prior sentence was, you're in, the, you're in the depths of hell, and now you're in extreme hell. So what is extreme hell? They live in worry day and night. Isn't that what's happening right now, right now across the world? They live in worry day and night. On the path of knowledge, those who do not serve to make others like themselves, but they worry about mine and yours, are the ones who are ill and diseased. So one is fighting because I am this, I am that, I am good, etc. Then the other is that there's worry. And so they are the ones who are ill and diseased, worrying about what this one does, what this one says, what, how this one gets treated, how this one is not treated. This is all worrying about yours and mine. To remember anyone but the father is adulterated. Remember, the father says, do not listen to anyone else. Listen to me alone. Remember me alone. There is no benefit in remembering human beings. It is better to remember deities. Um, many years ago, I was very surrendered, like I hadn't been surrendered that many years. So I went to Daddy and I said, Daddy, I don't remember Shiv Baba as much as I remember you. I remember you more than I remember Shiv Baba. So then I said to her, With you, by remembering you, will my sins be burnt? Because to me, she's like an elevated soul. So will my sins be burnt if I remember you? And so Daddy, she thought about it for a short moment. And she said to me, your sins will not be burnt, but you will get the power, the strength to do good action, the righteous action. So the past is not taken care of, but because you're remembering an elevated soul, 
then you get strength to become elevated. So Baba says, why did I remember this, that scene? There is no benefit in remembering human beings. It is better to remember deities. I remember once Sister Jensi had come to Nigeria and we'd organize a talk in the temple because when you organize a talk in the temple, you don't have to pay for the hall and you get an audience. So it was a temple. So she actually said in that temple, doing bhakti is better than doing nothing. So the father asks, why do you bow your heads when you are coming to when you are coming to this Baba, remember Shiv Baba and then come here. When you are coming to Brahma Baba, remember Shiv Baba and then come here. When you do not remember Shiv Baba, I think you might have to wear a seatbelt for the next part of this sentence. When you do not remember Shiv Baba, it is as though you are committing sin. Remembering bodily beings, intellect wandering here and there, other things, it's like you're committing sin. Baba says, first of all, make a promise to become pure. Remember, Shiv Baba, there are many precautions to take. So on one hand, Shiv Baba gives us the medicine. He's telling us to follow Shiva. At the same time as giving the medicine, he also tells us precaution. Like there are certain medics, if you go to a certain doctor medicine, like for example, homeopathic, they will give you the medicine and they will say, you can't drink tea, you can't drink coffee, you can't have this, you can't do this, you can't do that. So there are precautions plus medicine. So where are the precautions in Srimad in this? is there are many precautions to take Where am I? scarcely any of you are able to understand this the precautions they do not even have enough wisdom to know how to behave towards the father how to behave to somebody who is senior. The respect, the obedience. Very few have that wisdom, that understanding of how to be with Baba. A lot of effort is needed in this. To become of the bead, to become a bead of the rosary is not like going to your auntie's home. The main thing is to remember the father. Are you not able to remember the Father? There has to be so much service and remembrance of the Father. Baba tells you to keep a daily chat. The children who think about benefiting themselves will continue to take precautions in every way. So where are our precautions? Their food and drink will be very pure. I find this lockdown so interesting that in one shot, in one go, what has happened? People have started to prepare their own food. Restaurants are closed. Uh, all of these places where people go to eat, they are closed. And so now people are forced to to prepare their own food. People are forced into leading a more celibate lifestyle, purity. Because now it's like, I don't know what the state is in LA, but people wear masks and people are careful, social distancing. And so kissing and all of that seed of impurity and reduced drastically. So not only is there is the less pollution, 
there's less mental pollution also. So take precautions in every way. Their food and drink will be very pure. I remember one sister giving a class once and she said, what do Brahmins do these days? They say, oh, but you know, whatever. They buy things from the supermarket and they say, it's machine made, it's machine made, it's, it's not been touched by human hands. Yes, it is machine made, but was it offered to Baba? And when it's machine made, it's, it's touching metal. It's touching, even though it's been cleaned, it's touching metal. So what kind of vibrations are in that food? So this is why Baba encourages us to make our own bread, make our own chapatis, because our hands have vibrations. Our hands have a power. Uh, our hands have the ability to heal. Like for example, if you go to a healer, what will he use? How do healers heal? How did Christ heal? He used his hands. So preparing food with your hands, it's like you're putting healing energy into it. You're putting pure vibrations into it. And your eyes, eyes also have the power to heal. And so when you're giving drishti to your food, not after it's, not when it's in the plate, that drishti is different. But even whilst you're cooking, you're giving drishti to the food, you're looking at it. That also makes a big difference. In the preparation of the food, what vibes do you put? Because vibes go out from here. And so Baba talks about precaution of food. Baba explains so much for the benefits of the children. You have to take all kinds of precaution. Check that your food and drink are not impure. That's one aspect. So it doesn't have wrong vibrations and the other is that you are not greedy maya will make you do wrong things until you reach your karmati stage there is still time for that you will come to know later on that destruction is in front of you fire will spread you will see how bombs fall with rivers of blood will flow in Bharat. Bharat won't be so much, uh, there won't be so much nuclear war there, there'll be civil war there. So Baba saying, rivers of blood will flow in Bharat. Elsewhere, they will destroy one another with bombs. There will also be natural calamities. The greatest difficulties will be in Bharat. Keep an eye on yourself to see what service you do. How many do you make equal to yourself from an ordinary human into Narayan? Many are trapped in devotion. Whether it's reading the Bible, whether it's wearing the cross, whatever it is, many are trapped in devotion. They think if they're trapped in their devotion, and there's an arrogance also. They think, what can these daughters teach us? What can these little, little girls teach us? They don't understand that it is God, the Father, who is teaching them. Because they have a little education or they have wealth, they start arguing with you, educated people, important people, wealthy people, they start arguing with you. They lose their honor. Those who defame the Sadhguru cannot claim a high status. This is a very important and serious sentence and it's something that Baba says very often. So the Sadhguru in this case is Shiv Baba. But so those who defame the Sadhguru cannot claim a high status. But I can become an instrument, means if I do sin 
or if I do wrong actions, or if I do actions where other people have waste thought, that is defamation of the Sadhguru. That is one thing. Then the other is, if I defame the children of the Sadhguru, if I am defaming the sisters who live in the center, if I am defaming other Brahmins, then this is also the same. You are defaming the children of the Sadhguru. So even that will reduce your status. So here is not outside people defaming Baba's children. It's Baba's children defaming Baba's children. It's Baba's children defaming what they when they see something not right, they start to defame them. Or they start to talk against them, or they tell other people bad things about them. Those who defame the Sadhguru cannot claim a high status. They will then claim a status were Penis, Om Shanti, to the sweetest beloved, long lost and now found children. Love, remembrance, Events and good morning from the mother, the father, the father. The spiritual says Namaste to the spiritual children. The spiritual father What does Namaste mean? What does Namaste mean? Because Baba saying it to us every day. So we have to know what it means. And don't just say it's a greeting. Yes, it's a greeting. They do Namaste when you go on the Air India flight, they'll say Namaste to you. What does it mean? Hello? Is it uh, one soul bowing to the other soul? Okay. It's the God in you. I acknowledge the goodness in you. That's what Namaste is. Yes. I acknowledge the God in you. Also. Yes. The meaning is so beautiful. The meaning is the divinity in me acknowledges the divinity in you. Mm -hmm. So Namaste means I have divinity and I am also acknowledging. Because we don't bow to anybody, but I acknowledge, I respect, I see the divinity in you. So this is the meaning of Namaste. So when Baba says Namaste to us, it's Baba saying, the divinity in me acknowledges the divinity in you. You can look it up. You can look up the definition. Essence for dharna, one, renounce all worries of mine and yours and serve to make others similar to yourself. Only listen to the one father. Only remember the one father. Do not allow your remembrance to become adulterated. In order to benefit, second one, in order to benefit yourself, take great precautions about your food and drink. Check. So one is the precaution about the purity of the food. Second is check. Am I being greedy? Does Maya make me do wrong things? So like you see something, you want it, so stealing is a wrong thing, or lying. Does Maya make me do wrong things? Blessing. Now, within the blessing, there's a word which is... Um, I'll explain it. The word is battle of religion. So here Baba is not talking battle of the world religion, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam. He's not talking about that religion. So when you hear the blessing, then I will explain this battle of religion. Blessing. May you become victorious in the battle of religion 
by giving the proof of God's knowledge with your practical life. The Bible saying, you now have to come onto the stage of the battle of religion. So, what does this mean? It means that everyone has difference of opinion. In one family, the son's opinion will be different and the father's opinion is different. So it's like within that, it's like a battle is happening. Not a physical battle, but it's like, I don't agree with your opinion, you don't agree with my opinion. So subtly there's a battle and then they will see which one will win. Who is right in their opinion or whose opinion takes, becomes re reality. So this is when my opinion becomes a reality, then it's like I've won. So Baba is saying, you now have to come onto the stage of the battle of religion. In Hindi, the word is Dharam Yud. So like the Mahabharat, what was it? The Mahabharat was a Dharam Yud because it was one family. Kauravs and Pandavas were one family, but difference of opinion, difference of lifestyle, difference in everything. Huh? But within that, who became victorious? Those who were connected with Baba. So Baba says, you now have to come onto the stage of the battle of religion. The way to become victorious in that battle of religion is in your practical life. And your life should reflect Baba's teachings. So, in your practical life, because the proof of God's knowledge lies in your practical life. Let the knowledge and virtues be visibly, be visible, practical in your form, because nowadays your image cannot be proved or revealed by discussing anything but you can quieten anyone, quieten their thoughts, quieten anyone in a second with the practical form of your dharma. So here the word religion actually refers to our dharma. Dharam, dharma. When Baba talks about dharam, religion, he's talking about lifestyle, he's talking about way of life. It's talking about adharna. And so it's a battle of adharna means I have one, Baba's children have one way of thinking. The world has a different way of thinking. So within that, who is going to be victorious? Even within one family, there's differences, different belief systems. And so within that, it becomes like a battle. Who's going to be victorious in that battle? The one who? Their life reveals God's teaching. Slogan. In order to make the soul bright, finish any problems in your mind with the remembrance of God. I'm going to change the word here a bit. In order to make the soul radiant, means that shine, that sparkle. In order to make the soul sparkle, finish any, and again I'm going to change the word, finish any confusion in your mind. Problems in the mind, okay, but there's more confusion in the mind with the remembrance of God. Om Shanti. So that was today's Murli. That Srimad makes us happy, and that's what we want. We want happiness. Yesterday or the day before, Baba said in the Murli that Baba's talking two days in a row. He was talking about introversion. So what is introversion? 
And in Hindi, the word for introversion is antarmuti. Antar means inside, and muk means face. So the soul, which is inside the body, the soul also has a face. Soul has eyes, soul has ears, soul has mouth. It's like you talk to somebody in your mind. You see something with your mind's eye. You're listening to something internally. And I remember once, I don't know where, I was with daddy somewhere. And daddy said in the class, there was about 50 in front of her. And she said in the class, introversion is not a virtue. And I'm like, what? And I was sitting right in front of her. And I thought, daddy's made a mistake. She said something. She doesn't realize what she said. So I said, I touched her, touched her knee. I said, introversion is not a virtue. That's not right. She goes, yes, it's not a virtue. I said, daddy, it's one of the 36 virtues. It's on the list. And she goes, it's not a virtue. And I said, how so? She goes, introversion is a method to bring about the other virtues. It's a method, it's a tool that you would use to bring about the other virtues. So then it's like, oh, okay. So daddy did know what she was talking about. And then um, another scene I'll tell you about with daddy is <clears throat> I asked daddy once, what is the difference between victory and success? So she said to me, victory is over the vices. You never have victory in service. In service, you have success. So for example, if you do a program, then it was successful, right? You don't have success over vices. You have victory because you're battling with the vices. Uh, service is something you do to glorify Baba. Service is something to create your fortune. So it's not like Baba can glorify himself if he wants to. But it's like he's giving us a method to create our fortune. So... Then the other thing, now we don't have time, but we need to talk about Maya and Rava and what's the difference and who, how do they both work. And so it's been great uh, sharing with you. I don't, I don't know your names, I don't see your faces, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. And this lockdown is on one side, there's social distancing, but on the other side, I see emotional bonding happening as well on many levels. Uh, I was just standing outside the center because we can't go anywhere. So I was just standing outside the center and across the road, one sister waves to me and says, hello. And I didn't recognize her at first. And then, then I recognized her after a minute or so. I'd given her the course a year or so ago and she said to me, how are you? I said, I'm fine. She goes, the center must be closed. I said, yes, but we're doing everything online. She goes, really? So I said, yes. And then I said, I'll send you the link. And so she started listening to the classes online. And like there'd been a gap of one year. I hadn't seen her. She'd just done the course. That was all. And um, so it's like Baba brings back his children somehow, somewhere and somehow he gets them, he pulls them back to him because he knows that, you know, we're lost and wandering, etc., etc. But he will pull his children back to him. He knows with children belong to the deity plan. And that is where the emotional bonding happens. We all belong to the same family. So it doesn't matter where we're sitting. You might think you're not in the center, but actually everyone's home has become a center. Everyone's home has become a university come hospital. And so
So thank you and Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Let's we can meditate for one song or you like to glide meditation. Yes. Ben is also here from Ahmedabad. And uh, you can just guide one short meditation and then everyone can open their video and just stay in meditation. So Indu Ben can also give drasti, but mute your mic, okay? Everybody mute your mic. <laughs> 